right now we're talking about the cloud infrastructure impact beyond telework. While the immediate in response to the crisis demanded a rapid pivot to remote working, collaboration is really only half as, as of the story as the organizations that were previously only comfortable with keeping COVID their data in on-premises data centers have now started to think very differently. Well, the speed of response to the COVID-19 crisis demanded a swift dismantling of the internal barriers to cloud tech adoption through a high level shift in priorities with cloud suddenly becoming the de facto uh, operating model. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for our cloud infra and data panel discussion on cloud management and storage in cloud, when we're looking at covering a systematic approach to data security, flexibility in managing multi-structured data, robust and scalable data infrastructure as data traffic surges, data ownership and privacy, best practices for data management, future of data centers, modernizing infrastructure to support AI and ML. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got with us our panelists, Ravi GV, the Global Director Analytics, AI and ML, Kerry. Well, Ravi, with versatile domain experience, including uh, technology online and in-store retail, outsourcing and others, Ravi, someone who set the vision and strategy, strategy to unleash the potential across functional silos in order to deliver strong margin expansion and uh, revenue growth. Also, we are joined by Raja Mani Balaji, the enterprise architect, data management and analytics Tetra Pak, who's joined us. Well, Raja Mani, uh, with 17 plus years of experience in enabling global business warehouse implementations, enterprise reporting, data management strategies. Balaji is a leader in effective decision-making and is an infrastructure for um, master data governance at Tetra Pak. We're also joined by Gabrie Gabriel uh, David, the chief information officer, LCC group of companies. Well, Gabriel, well-seasoned tech leader with uh, 20 plus years of experience working in different industries such as retail, health, medical, transportation, and logistics. Gabriel has proven ability to implement technology-based solutions aligned with core business strategies. And this entire panel discussion, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be moderated by Andy Stone, the uh, Regional Director, Technology Innovation, Prudential Corporation Asia. Well, Andy is leading AI pioneer and global visionary with three plus decades of innovation, experience in range of uh, industries, including insurance, finance, health, transportation, education, and government. Well, with this, I'd like to now thank our uh, panelists for joining us. I'd request all of you to now keep your uh, video and audio button uh, on. You can unmute yourself. Also, uh, if anyone has any questions for our audience, from the audience for our panel, I'd like to take that up towards the end of the panel, wherein I'll be uh, requesting Andy to take it forward with his uh, panelists. Uh, so I'd request if you have any questions, do use the Q&A tab type in those uh, questions and keep them coming as we have our panelists now, ladies and gentlemen, on your screen. Over to you, Andy. Thank you so much for the introduction, Bhavana. Uh, Andy, uh, welcome. just a moment. Uh, I oh. just request uh, Gabriel as well, if I can uh, have Gabriel, if your, your video is still not. Yes, perfect. Andy, I'm so sorry. I'll just leave it now to you. Thank you. <laughs> Super. Okay. Welcome to our panel discussion on data management storage in the cloud. You know, we have an amazing lineup of panel members with backgrounds in food and beverages, food packaging, and major supermarket and retailer. Now, before we uh, introduce you to our panel, let me uh, provide a backdrop for our discussion. The COVID-19 pandemic has basically forever changed the retail landscape significantly and, and possibly for, for the long run. You know, online shopping has replaced brick and mortar shopping. In a recent study, it is estimated that increase in online shopping amounts to over a hundred billion US dollars since COVID-19. You know, companies are all rushing to digitize themselves, embark digital transformation projects, as well as improve customer digital experience. Um, of course, you know, technologies like AI, machine learning, and data uh, analytics all play important roles in digital transformation efforts to help better understand customer needs as well as improve customer experience with AI, you know, hyper-personalization, AI chatbot, customer servicing, automated processing with RPAs, et cetera. So there's a lot of uh, new demands in terms of infrastructure and data. And I myself, I'm from the insurance uh, of industry and insurance companies are also heavily leveraging AI. You know, for example, at Prudential where I work, we use AI throughout many of our internal processes. 
you know, such as uh, you know, automated uh, underwriting, uh, dynamic pricing, uh, automatic uh, claims, fraud detection, et cetera. We also use AI to help improve customer health. For example, Prudential has an all-in-one AI app called Pulse, helps our customers stay healthier uh, with AI health check, AI chatbots, uh, facial analytics to predict BMI and much more. The, the app has been downloaded over 12 million times since COVID-19. And it just shows you know, the, the great impact COVID-19 has in industries all around. Um, you know, uh, for, uh, we have gone virtual in the selling process to replace face-to-face, -face, for example, you know, adopting technologies like eKYC, e-documents, e-signatures, e-payments, et cetera. So a lot of technology change uh, uh, in, in, in various industries to cope with uh, COVID-19. Uh, with so much change in consumer behavior and technology use since COVID-19, it is interesting to learn from our panel you know, how they have been coping and, 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 and what words of advice they might have. Uh, to, to start, may I ask each panel member to briefly introduce yourself as well as mention a bit about, uh, about your role. Uh, let's start with Ravi um, from Kerry. Ravi? Hi, um, I lead analytics, uh, AI and ML at uh, Kerry. We're uh, deep into food manufacturing. You probably wouldn't see a Kerry name anywhere, but, uh, but we serve about a billion people uh, through various um, other customers that we have. Uh, prior to this, I was with Google. I used to manage sales ops, uh, before which I was with Tesco, Dell. Uh, so wide range of, uh, of experience across a variety of uh, different companies. Super, thank you. Uh, Balaji uh, from TerraPak, you want to say a few words? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Balaji Rajmani uh, from TerraPak, and my role is the enterprise architect for data management and analytics, primarily accountable for all the data management initiatives, one of the data engineering, uh, the reporting uh, stacks, and the data governance overall, and for the data strategy. And uh, based out of Singapore, and my past experience includes product developments companies like SAP, Oracle, consulting as well. So I'm looking forward for the discussion. Yeah, great, thank you. Gabi uh, from LLC, you wanna say a few words? Oh, um, uh, you are on mute right now? Great. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm Gabi David, I'm the CIO of LCC and LCC is a one of the biggest retail company in the Philippines. It's actually in, in, uh, on the southeastern side of the Philippines. Uh, they basically have a hundred stores all over the Bicol area. Uh, we, we are, they have multiple companies as well. From uh, We're running department stores, supermarkets, and also food manufacturing as well. And we're, we're also into uh, developing our own credit card as well. Okay, thank you so much. Now, by the way, just a, just a, a reminder again to the audience, feel free to type in your questions as we go. I'll try to take some questions uh, if it's relevant now or at the end of the, of the talk. Okay, my first question to the panel is whether you think with COVID-19, the behavior and habit of your users or customers have changed. And and how and, and how how has the change uh, impact what you do uh, on your your day to day work? Uh, maybe uh, Robbie, you want to start with this? Sure. Um, I think massive impacts. Uh, there was a there was a joke going on in uh, in WhatsApp, which uh, had this whole checklist: is who brought the most digital transformation in your company? The CEO, the CFO, or COVID nineteen? And, and it checked COVID nineteen. I think. That's so true um, for our journey. There are things which we've probably been trying for uh, months to get approvals, but the minute COVID hit, it was generally recognized that this was a fire we needed to tackle very quickly. Um, so we went through a massive uh, transformation effort to mobilize people working from home and um, get them to be equally productive, if not more. Um, uh, there was a, a lot of conversation around how we can make this uh, happen. We were in the process of moving from, um, you know, local work to a lot more on the cloud. Uh, in any case, uh, with the exception of SAP, which is still on, 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 a, on a server farm, everything else is uh, now on the cloud. Um, and it got much easier for people to work with this because we need to have a shared drive kind of system earlier. 
But when you move to cloud, you don't need the VPN anymore because when so many people are trying to access the VPN, it would crash very frequently. So the COVID thing has changed so much in terms of just the infrastructure, ways of working, processes. We've eliminated loads of approval steps in some of the processes that we would have needed earlier. Paper forms got digitized very quickly. Um, so a lot of change. Okay, very interesting, very interesting. Um, uh, definitely, you know, with uh, more work from home, a uh, lot of now new demands uh, in in your workplace. Uh, Gabi, you want to add anything to uh, to to that? How COVID nineteen has impacted your work? Well, uh, I, we definitely uh, uh, a lot of things have practically changed. Uh, not only on the technology side, but also the habits of the people. So uh, when when first two months of the of, of the pandemic uh, people or probably even even more people didn't really want to uh, go out uh, meet people face to face so we definitely have to change a lot of strategy in terms of technology how do we actually make people mobile more to be well not as exactly as, as, as efficient as uh, working in an office but at least at least at the 90, 90, uh, 80 to 90% uh, efficient in, in, in providing them the tools that they need for them to be able to work at home. Um, of course, uh, well, thanks a lot with, with Zoom and, and all of these collaboration tools that are available in, in, over the cloud. We were able to do that as, as pretty much fast. Right. Uh, I guess what's 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 very important was that uh, the collaboration tools that we've implemented in LCC actually really help us a lot in terms of uh, doing the meeting, sharing files, documents, uh, even even getting uh, digital signatures or for for for, for document that has to be signed. Uh, it really helps us a lot. So yeah, a lot of things have definitely changed. Um, from not only on the technology side, but also on the habits of the people. Great, thank you. Definitely um, sounds like a lot of, uh, you've been very busy. <laughs> Balaji. Yeah. Yes. Balaji, on your side, any impact at all for you? <laughs> uh, I would like to share a few, as uh, Ravi and Gabriel mentioned, the collaboration platforms have become much more important than ever. It can be Microsoft Teams, Zooms, and things like that. So that is kind of a very important aspect. There's a huge change than the previous uh, years where you have to go on physical discussions. And also people have started realizing that this digital collaboration is working, you know, because as you see, not just the uh, officers are, are having limitations, even travels have been limited. So people realize even a cross border collaboration can be more seamless, even if you're not physically there. And then obviously the e-approvals and the digitalization have become kind of norm and people have started adapting to it. So I, I think it's change. At the same time, uh, it's also something for us to go through. So, yeah. Okay, great. That's, uh, that's in incredible. It sounds like definitely COVID-19 has accelerated digital transformation by by years uh, in, in all your organizations which is which is a uh, you which is you know which is a benefit and you know, obviously we don't want to see COVID-19 happen but now now that it has you know with this push for digital transformation it's really been a, a benefit to the IT organization to get things moving and get a budget approved uh, my second question is, you know, with all these new activities, online collaboration, work from home, and, and changing consumer behavior, how, how, how does your organization ensure uh, secure access to, uh, to data and documents in, in your work environment? Um, anybody want to share on that? Um, Gabby, you have, you have any, any, any thoughts on, 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 on the security side? Oh, well that's, that? well, that's that's actually the most challenging part. Uh, how do you basically yeah. enable, uh, especially people that are basically working from home? How do you ensure that all of these documents are not leaked to other other uh, other people? Right. Um, well, 
uh, what we what we're currently doing is that we in place application tools that we only to monitor that whatever applications are, are being downloaded, it's actually being registered to our systems as well. So that way we definitely know that uh, who's actually using the file and, yeah. and who downloaded the file, who, who particularly updated the file. Now these are actually tools that are available also on, on collaboration tools uh, over the cloud as well that you can actually monitor behaviors that are being done on, the, on a certain document. Uh, but I guess what's what's challenge the challenging part is for applications that are actually running over the cloud. So there, there's 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 a deep challenge there that we have to uh, ensure that passwords are not being shared. Uh, and these are that these are the uh, this this accounts are not being leaked. So we, we the only way we can actually do that is to secure it in, in a way that there should only be one account that should be able to be logged at any given point in time. And if and if something if, if the two accounts are logged at one pin but at one point period in time, it automatically uh, notifies uh, the, the systems administrator. Also, what we what we currently do is that we we, we, we set a certain peak hour, uh, uh, working hours, where the times that the particular employee can actually work and access the, the, uh, the, 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 the systems and whatever document that it needs to access. So those are the security parts that we implemented in, in LCC just to ensure that uh, we cover our, uh, we, I mean, uh, in the retail industry, uh, there are a lot of challenges in terms of, uh, there, there, there are some leases that we have to protect and we don't want that to be uh, divulged to other retail industries. So we make sure that we keep the information deep inside the, the organization. I was like a lot of, cha lot of challenges. Uh, Balaji, how about on your side? You have uh, sim similar challenges in terms of security? Um, yes, I, I'm, from my, my side, what I would say, there has to be a the neighbor. So if you look purely from an information and they, we clearly see the classification of information has become part because all these are this side. Is it confidential information? Is it internal information? And ways in which you classify every document and those classifications kind of determine who can access it, where can it be accessed, can you put it on a cloud, should it be within your network. So several other aspects come into the picture when you start really looking at information classification. And also now it has gone even further because now usually when you talk about data access, we're always talking about the content of the data, right? Whether it is sensitive or it can be shared with others. But now we are going beyond just the content of the data. It's also the path in which the data goes. It's the network effect, like that we keep hearing about the zero, zero trust uh, kind of uh, um, topics. So these are getting more traction. We clearly see this is a very important topic. Uh, the security, not just the data security, the overall cybersecurity has been a key topic, not just for IT, it's at the top level in the business. So this has been uh, getting a lot of traction, obviously, and there's a lot of work going in these areas the company. Very challenging. Ravi, how about how about your company? What, what do you do in terms of uh, insurance security? I think likewise, uh, we went through a process even before COVID uh, to restrict um, a lot of the uploads. Um, you know, USB was in any case not available for data transfers and so on. Um, emailing personal IDs was also restricted. So there were a number of restrictions that were put in place. Um, we've enhanced security ever since uh, very steadily. We have a strong practice um, around that primarily because a lot of our work is IP protected. Um, so even when we move to the cloud, there's quite a bit that you can or cannot do, including mobile phones, you know, you can't share a, a file, for instance, on a messenger. Um, from from your phone, um, you couldn't you can't share uh, desktops in some cases. Outlook has its own built-in security that we use quite heavily um, in terms of data sensitivity and so on. So so like the other two panelists, this is exactly what we've done and, and only enhanced it after COVID. Thank you so much. That's really interesting. A lot of sharing on 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 best practices and security. Um, and which is very important when almost practically all activities are online uh, these days. 
Uh, let, let me jump to a question on AI. You know, there's, you know, all companies are talking about AI machine learning and there's growing demand for AI machine learning across all industries. You know. um, how would infrastructure need to be modernized to support this? You know, for, or, or your, is, is your company uh, looking into AI? Is your company doing AI? And, and if so, you know, what has this, you know, caused changes in, in how you structure the infrastructure and make data, you know, particularly data, because AI uses a lot of data for machine learning. You know, how do you, ch have you changed, you know, access to data, for example? Um, um, Ravi, you, you, want, you want to start that, uh, that question? Yeah, sure. So, um, so AI, there's a number of, uh, of projects that we've been working on. Um, the trouble, Andy, is, is just finding a good enough use case with a good return on investment. AI tends to be data intensive. You, you can't do much if you've got limited data. And if your data is highly dimensional, meaning you've got loads of uh, data, but you know when you narrow it down to a specific customer type or a specific category, you've got like lesser and lesser and lesser. And then let's say you try to apply it to a country, it becomes even lesser. So the dimensionality is, a, is, a, is an unfortunate uh, problem in some of the data sets that we have. COVID's funnily caused a bit of a mess because your data trends that you've had in the past don't work anymore with COVID. So that throws a lot of your modeling out of the window. So when we modeled it prior and then the accuracy was great, when you went into COVID, the accuracy dramatically dropped. And now when we include the COVID data, you're going to build new stuff. We come out of COVID and then that changes again. So it is, a, it is a challenge in terms of just data infrastructure, almost everything is in the cloud that we end up using with AI. You can very rarely do good AI with stuff on your machine itself. Um, sure. You could, I mean, you could run it through R or Python and still work with it, but a lot of the AI type solutions exist uh, cloud native and, and it makes sense to always have that migrated to the cloud before you do it. Uh, we've worked with, uh, with IBM Watson, Salesforce Einstein. Uh, there's loads of applications and it's all hosted in, in the cloud in any case. So it's a, it's a, it's a strong, empowering um, feature for us to have that. Um, I think we always kind of remember um, something that PwC came up with a while ago, where they said 88% um, of companies get little or no data, uh, no value from data uh, and much less from AI. Uh, so for us, we're very careful in our selection of, uh, of where we want to apply AI as use cases and what the return on investment is. So true, so true. And uh, you know, AI machine learning is, is never ending because uh, market conditions change and consumer behavior change. Uh, so, Indeed. Yeah, always important to get updated. Balaji, uh, how about your company? Are you using AI machine learning? Uh, and what have you been doing with it? So we, we do have a center of uh, data science, center of excellence, and we are running it centrally. But as uh, listening to Ravi as well, what we see is there are there are significant impact when it comes to the infrastructural patterns, especially when we're talking about machine learning example, because as you all know, we are a manufacturing company spread around the world. So what we see is that will definitely be a need for a centralized uh, instances in the cloud where you can take all the information across the world, crunch it and work as one part. At the same time, there will always be regional or local adaptations of the data, you know, because not all the data is going to be unique. It might be some specifications can be different based on the customers and the different regions. So we see learning can happen both in the central instance in the cloud. There can also be local learning and there can also be a combination. Some learning can be done centrally and deployed into a local instance and augmented with the local learning. But this is where the infrastructure becomes very critical because then we need to ensure we have the computational capability, how you really transfer or move your analytical or algorithmic assets in a safe way from one place in the cloud all the way to an edge of the machine and capture the parameters and take it back. So what we are learning is the work from a work context point of view, actually the data engineering and the data infrastructure tasks are much more larger than a coding as well. So these are something which we're learning over as we are growing through this journey. So this is completely uh, algorithms we are building. But when we talk about cognitive capabilities, we also leverage what is readily available because we don't necessarily have to build everything. 
talking about the conversational solutions, we see that, uh, you know, especially when people need 24 by 7 support in a COVID scenario, they have a lot of questions employees come with. So they have to build a chat board or something which has a native cognitive capabilities. There we leverage the uh, industry uh, available solutions. We only invest in training in terms of the, our company's vocabulary, the, you know, the ontologies, so that we can, there are a maximum value out of it. There, I see the infrastructure effect is reasonably less, but the training you know, specific to tailor making to our company is slightly larger. So I think it's in two ways. Sounds like you've been very busy uh, with AI. Uh, Gabi, how about uh, in your organization? Um, any change to what you do because of uh, AI and machine learning work? Oh, you're on mute right now. The, 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 good, the, good, the good thing in, in our end is that we've, we've just practically started in artificial intelligence. And so we're, we're, we're currently building an infrastructure, but uh, to the point of Ravi, uh, while we're building it because of pandemic, everything we, we had to practically change everything. So uh, now what we're currently doing is that we're loading the the data warehouse of the humongous, humongous data, loading it up in preparation for for in building up the dimensions for the artificial intelligence. Uh, we are in that process, but we haven't yet completed the implementation for just artificial intelligence. Okay, great. Sounds like you're in preparation mode, We're, and there's there's tons of work in, in even that. I mean, just preparing data, uh, making it available, and cleaning the data, and that, that's substantial. So maybe, maybe I could add to this question, you know, Prudential and the insurance industry in general are, are being disrupted in big ways of AI and machine learning, just like, you know, just like companies that, you know, that, that you just talked about. Uh, for us, you know, we, we use AI from frictionless custom, uh, customer experience with uh, totally digital experience to streamlining back office um, processes like claim processing. And we use RPA. We use AI for fraud detection. Uh, I think one of the challenges of uh, traditional insurance companies going digital is the pace of digital transformation. Uh, everything has to be in place. Um, and to give you an example, how we solve that at, at Prudential is uh, we currently have in place a very fast uh, innovation process that takes great ideas and turn them into go live innovation within a week or so. You know, that, that's, that's incredible. Um, and this is through a well thought out and highly scalable infrastructure with robust data, data capability. So, you know, we have a well, well, well defined uh, CICD pipeline that share across our entire region, you know, um, you know uh, uh, roughly a dozen countries, uh, total uh, automated testing, standardized APIs, and, and uh, together with our digital ecosystem app, which, you know, we call Pulse, allows us to easily plug in new capabilities. And these are new, uh, could be AI or, or non-AI, and launch immediately into the app store. So this has allowed potential to innovate at speeds. I think, you know, young startups will find hard to catch up. So infrastructure and definitely infrastructure and data plays very important roles in the pace of uh, innovation. Uh, let's move to another question. Um, now that we have talked about you know, what, what you've done and, and uh, uh, how, how that has kept you busy, um, if you have a, um, a um, magic crystal ball, uh, what do you think will be new trends or new technologies uh, that you would need to put in place to support the new norm um, because habits have changed, uh, work habits, uh, could be consumer habits, could be uh, changes in how your uh, applications are used, changes in how your infrastructure needs to grow, changes in, in how data is used. So if you have a crystal ball and you could just predict what do you think is uh, would be the trend in, uh, moving forward in terms of technology, and how how your your, your work might have changed uh, in in the coming years? Uh, any taker on this question? This is probably the easiest question because you you could just pretend <laughs> imagine anything <laughs> you like. Robbie, since you're laughing, okay, I'll have you <laughs> you start. <laughs> No, I, I would think, uh, I think edge computing is probably going to be a lot more prevalent than we have it right now. Uh, with the need for um, on-demand kind of computing, especially in the voice, voice to text or 
uh, text back into voice. Uh, there's loads of work that's going on in that space, which will okay. uh, which will clearly help us. Um, I think blockchain is probably going to be a big deal as well, um, uh, increasingly, um, kind of as we go deeper and deeper into the crisis and beyond, we're going to see uh, a need for businesses to start up their practice on blockchain. Um, and I only see a lot more machine learning AI coming through. Definitely. Oh, by the way, uh, we have uh, uh, Sarat, uh, maybe you could, uh, I think you're done, uh, in the next panel. Maybe you could turn off your video for the time being. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Gabi, what's your crystal ball telling you? Oh, uh, well, a lot more on artificial intelligence. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, I think uh, uh, quantum computing will now be the priority of all. Uh, computer manufacturers uh, because the growing of data and, and, and how important data is for, for, for business and, and running the, their organizations. Um, uh, uh, machine learning, yes, uh, but I guess uh, I, would, I would see the increase in uh, business process automations uh, as a lot of organizations really felt uh, the impact of the pandemic and therefore, they're, they're finding ways to automate uh, processes that can be done automated, rather than putting people there. Uh, of course, there will be a huge impact in, 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 in the manpower reduction, but uh, in keeping in, to survive uh, and to avoid uh, this type of circumstances that we need physical people in the office, those are the things that organizations are trying to resolve. I try to find a way how to can they can actually move forward. So I'm I'm really expecting the, the increase in business process automation. Thank you. Yes, definitely. You know, AI machine learning still have a lot of traction in the coming years, and uh, I think the key that all industries are looking into is how to automate, uh, streamline, uh, take the human out of the the processes, and yeah. so that they could do more uh, more important uh, value added tasks rather than mundane tasks. Balaji, how about you? What's your what's your crystal ball telling you? I would look at three things. You know, the first to specific and third is more a wild candidate. The first would be I see that the hyper automation uh, you know, will become much more prevalent. When I say hyper automation, it includes a combination of machine learning, automation in the business process, and making your business applications more intelligent. Because people really want the next generation of intelligence to be tapped onto their status quo process. That's clearly uh, one emerging thing. And the second uh, thing, what we clearly see is the interoperable solutions across different enterprise. Because what we see is the collaboration across your ecosystem. It can be a suppliers, it can be a customers. So when you're going to work with them, your solutions, uh, you know, it can be data, it can be cognitive, it can be business application. They should be interoperable and work efficiently. Otherwise, it's going to really be a kind of a challenge for you in the value chain. So interoperability and integrations, especially like APIs and things, these are really going to be the yeah. forward. Third one, uh, from a technology wise, since Andy, you asked, I would just pick up the most hot technology will be social distancing technologies, at least for the next few years. You know, everything you do it anyway going to be consumed by all kinds of industries or all of us, right? So uh, that uh, from a technology or a domain perspective is going to be another focus area. That, that's great, that's great. So that's that's wonderful. It's so so interesting to hear all these great insights from uh, from from the three uh, leaders uh, in our panel. I think we're close to uh, to our time. So before we end, let me quickly ask each of the panel members to give in two or three words one piece of advice for for data or cloud success. Um, okay, let me give you a minute to think. Just two or three words. Not a full sentence, just two or three words. That's most important advice that you can give anyone. Um, Balaji, you uh, want I to say? Portable, interoperable, pure. Okay, super. It's aligned with uh, what you just, uh, the, 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 the talk you just gave on, 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 the, on the future. That's very good. Gabby, what's your two or three words? I, I have the same thing as uh, as, as as what mentioned a while ago. I, I uh, which is uh, sorry, uh, Bradley, 
Ah, yeah. Okay. Ravi. Uh, to me, I think use cases, sponsorship, use cases. sponsorship, and agile experimentation. Okay. Very good pieces of advice. Okay, with that, I'd uh, like to uh, conclude this panel. I'd uh, like to thank all the panel members for, the, the, uh, for your precious time and variable sharing. And I uh, hope we'll meet again in uh, online virtually. Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye. 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 See you. Good day. Bye. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you to all our panelists for joining us.